So what he decides to do is he takes a brick, he takes this 2x4, throws the brick at him, he throws the 2x4. Oh shit! Yo, what's up? It's Jibs. Let's get right into it. The year is 2014. I just graduated college, wide-eyed, bushy-tailed, not knowing what the hell I'm gonna do with my life. So I decide, hey, I'm gonna apply for this program. I'm gonna go teach English in Turkey. So I get into the program, we get in, we go travel to Istanbul, because that's where I'm gonna be based. We get into lots of wild and crazy adventures, but there's one thing that happened that shook me to my core, scared me straight, and never again will I be that dumb. Now, if you go to Istanbul or if you go to Turkey, there's a lot of wild dogs, there's a lot of wild cats, and during the day, especially in the tourist areas, these dogs and these cats are just chilling. They're hanging out with you, just being normal, everyday animals, just trying to see the tourist sites. They're pretty docile. They hang out in the bushes. They come eat lunch with you. They will keep you company while you're admiring the beautiful artwork. During the day in the tourist areas, a lot of these dogs are sedentary because uh, they get sedated by the government or by some officials so that they don't really bother the tourists or the people. So now going back to me and these group of guys were all in our late teens, early 20s, and at that age, you're just trying to have a good time, do things that you were told not to do, and go out at times you're not supposed to go out. So it's 2 a.m., 3 a.m., we decided to go out into one of the main tourist areas where the Blue Mosque is, and those dogs, during the day, they might be pretty sedentary because they were sedated, but in the evening, they get pretty crazy, pretty wild, they're just out there clubbing, gang banging, barking, running, jumping. Me and my buddies were just walking around, having a good time, making jokes, and there's these dogs running around, going crazy, wilding out. We pay no mind to them, they don't matter. So we're walking down this alleyway, just minding our own business, and out of the corner of the alleyway comes these three mutant-looking dogs. They're standing there, grimacing, smiling at us, ready to pounce, but they're not moving. Now, I know you're not supposed to run away. These dogs might not be harmful, and if you run away from dogs, they're gonna chase you. That's just the way they work. So what do my scaredy-cat friends decide to do? They turn around and they book it, and I'm like, Oh shit! So I start running. I'm running. These dogs start chasing us. They're like, oh yeah, let's play tag. So they're chasing us. We're running. And I'm scared because these dogs looked really scary. And the thing is, it's 2 a.m. There's nowhere to go. There's no coffee shop to hide in. There's no restaurant to go into. There's no bathroom to hide in. As we were running, we noticed this little secure area that where we decided to go. You ever seen those parking lots that have those, those like stick gates that go up and down? You know, you know what I'm talking about? Me and my athletic ass decided to jump over that gate, get into the area, but my not so athletic friends crash into the gate, break the gate in half, and now we're in this area where the dogs can, in, can get into because the gate is broken. So now we're in this area, the dogs are coming, and what, what I notice out of the corner of my eye, out of this little booth comes this small Turkish security guard, and he starts screaming. He notices that these dogs are coming towards us, so what he decides to do is he takes a brick, he takes this two by four, throws the brick at him, he throws the two by four. Oh shit! hit the dogs in the in the face I felt kind of bad about it but the dogs ran away now the dogs aren't our problem anymore this small turkish security guard is we broke his gate so he turns around and he starts screaming at us and he starts screaming at us in turkish and we don't know what he's saying and he realizes that we don't speak turkish and so he tries his best to speak english he's like problem 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 and we're like no problem no problem no problem out of fury he tells us that he's gonna call the police takes his phone out dials the number now the thing is is before we left for this trip we were told that if you ever get in trouble with the police, that they'll probably beat you and there's nothing that we can do about it. You might go to jail and we're gonna try our best to get you out. So now us, young, dumb, broke, naked and afraid, not really naked, are super scared. We're gonna get beat, we're gonna go to jail. I'm never gonna see my family again. The Turkish security guard is getting so much joy out of us shitting our pants that he takes the camera phone out and he starts taking pictures of us. <laughs> While he's laughing at us, he decides to have a moment of graciousness and he goes into his little booth and he comes out with some pieces of chicken and he starts offering them to us. Now I'm hungry, I'm scared, and this might be my last meal ever. So I took that piece of chicken. That chicken actually wasn't too bad. Now what he decides to do is he calls his manager over and he wants one of us to go back with him to have a conversation. So our supervisor was with us, but he's only like a year or two older than us. So he was also young, dumb and broke. 
They go back for what felt like an eternity. So what happened is the manager and our supervisor came back and was like, hey, called off the police. You don't got to worry. Our supervisor had told them that we're just a bunch of kids. We're here for, we're teaching English. We're helping the good. We're helping people out. I have a theory that we actually got let go for another reason, but that's a much bigger discussion. And that's for another day. So every single day after that, we would pass by that gate. And what they had done is they took a little two by four, they wrapped a piece of rope around that gate. And it was this little raggedy ratchet gate that would struggle to go up and come back down. I felt really bad about it. Lesson learned, never doing something stupid like that again and getting almost arrested. Number one, use common sense. Don't run away from fucking dogs, especially non-domesticated wild dogs. Side story, there was this time when I got off the bus and I was like in middle school or high school and I had been afraid of dogs at that point when I was really young. It's a brown thing. It's a discussion for another day. And I was walking home and there was this dog who was super excited, super happy to see his owner, but also to see people coming out of the bus and he started coming towards me and I got really scared and I started running. And he jumped on top of me and I was like crying and I was like super scared. And then the owner came over and just kind of took her took him off and was like, why did you run away? Hey man, I grew up being taught that dogs are sinful. Again, it's a brown thing. We'll talk about it in a future video. Be nice to figures of authority, especially if you don't speak their language. If they're offering you chicken, take the chicken. If they're taking pictures of you, pose for the pictures. Have fun with it, because if you're having fun with it, they're more likely to be less aggressive. Nothing good happens after midnight. If there's nobody to watch you, there's no figures of authority around to make sure that things are okay. Like during the day, you're gonna get in trouble. Know the local laws. Go to travel.state.gov. They lay out exactly what you should and shouldn't do and how to act if you go overseas. Use the buddy system, have a buddy with you. If you get in trouble, then you can kind of just blame it on your friend. Or if danger is in your way, just kind of push your friend in the way and run away. That's why you need a buddy. No, seriously, it's good to have somebody with you for sanity purposes. Don't dress to impress. Don't wear your latest jewels. Don't wear your grills. Don't wear flashy earrings and necklaces and bracelets. Don't be wearing $5 million Supreme hoodies or your latest Yeezys. Blend in, seem like you know where you're going, even if you don't. People are less likely to bother you, haggle you. They're also less likely to scam you. Learn the local pleasantries. Learn to say hello. Learn to say thank you. Learn to say hello. Learn to say goodbye. Learning those simple things can go a really long way and lets people know that you're trying your best and that you're not some ignorant American who thinks that everybody should speak English. But if you're looking for a story of a lifetime, don't follow any of these rules. Oh shit.